This right here is graphene, that magical material with all those amazing properties. But unlike all those technologies that are just five years away, this is being commercialized in products as we speak. You've been promised miracle batteries for years. Faster charging, longer life, phones that juice up in minutes, electric cars that fill like gas tanks. But nothing ever shows up. Labs publish flashy papers, startups hype prototypes, then silence. But something different is happening right now. And then there's graphene. Now, you've probably heard graphene referred to as a wonder material for all the crazy things that it can do. And the reason that it can do all these crazy things is because graphene is only one atom thick. Major manufacturers have opened production lines, automakers are announcing timelines, and for the first time, the technology that's been stuck in research labs for over a decade is actually crossing into the real world. And it's happening in 2026. So what's actually arriving and why should you care this time? What graphene actually is and why it matters. Graphene is just carbon, but it's carbon arranged in a single layer of atoms forming a hexagonal lattice that looks almost like chicken wire under a microscope. It was first isolated in 2004 by two scientists at the University of Manchester, Andrei Geim and Konstantin Novoselov, who won the Nobel Prize for it six years later. They pulled it off graphite using scotch tape, which sounds absurd, but it worked. What makes graphene special isn't just that it's thin, it's that it combines properties that shouldn't coexist. It's stronger than steel by a huge margin, about 200 times stronger, yet it's flexible. It conducts electricity better than copper. It conducts heat better than almost any material known. And it's nearly transparent, absorbing only about 2% of light despite being a solid sheet of atoms. For battery researchers, this combination is almost perfect. Batteries need materials that can move electrons quickly, handle heat without degrading, and maintain structural integrity through thousands of charge cycles. Graphene does all of that. In theory, adding it to a battery could make charging faster, increase how much energy fits inside, extend the lifespan, and reduce the risk of overheating or fires. The obsession started almost immediately after its discovery. If you could replace or enhance the materials inside lithium-ion batteries with graphene, the improvements could be enormous. But turning a lab curiosity into something you can manufacture by the millions turned out to be far harder than anyone expected. The difference between graphene batteries and regular lithium-ion. When people say graphene battery, they're not talking about one single design. The term covers several different approaches, all involving graphene but in different ways. Some use graphene to enhance the anode, the part of the battery that stores lithium ions when it charges. Others add it to the cathode where ions move during discharge. Some replace the graphite anode entirely. And then there are hybrid designs that combine graphene with supercapacitors or solid-state electrolytes. In a typical lithium-ion battery, the anode is made of graphite, which is just stacked layers of graphene. But those layers don't conduct as well as single-layer or few-layer graphene. By using separated graphene sheets, you increase the surface area and improve how fast ions can move in and out. That speeds up charging and discharging. Graphene can also be mixed with silicon, which stores more lithium than graphite, but tends to swell and crack during charging. Graphene's flexibility helps stabilize silicon, preventing it from breaking apart and extending the battery's life. On the cathode side, adding graphene improves conductivity and heat dissipation. This means the battery can handle higher currents without overheating, which is critical for fast charging. Then there are graphene supercapacitor hybrids. These combine the high energy density of a battery with the rapid charge and discharge of a capacitor. The result is something that can charge in seconds and last tens of thousands of cycles, though energy density is still lower than pure batteries. So when a company says they're launching a graphene battery, you have to ask which kind, because the performance varies a lot depending on the design. Why it took so long to get here. The gap between discovering graphene and putting it in your phone wasn't about whether it worked. Lab tests showed the benefits early on. The problem was making it cheaply, at scale, and in a form that actually fit inside a real product. Producing high-quality graphene in large quantities was incredibly expensive. Early methods involved chemical vapor deposition where carbon gases are deposited onto a metal surface under high heat. It worked, but it was slow and costly. You couldn't make enough graphene to fill a battery factory, let alone price it competitively against existing materials. Then there was the issue of consistency. Graphene's properties depend heavily on how it's made. Too many defects, and it loses its conductivity. Flakes that are too small don't provide the surface area benefits. 
Getting uniform, high-quality graphene every time was a challenge that took years to solve. Stability was another hurdle. Graphene can react with electrolytes in batteries, forming unwanted compounds that degrade performance. Researchers had to develop coatings and treatments to prevent this without losing the material's advantages. And even when those problems were solved in the lab, scaling up to industrial production introduced new ones. Manufacturing processes that work for small batches don't always translate to high-speed, high-volume lines. Quality control becomes harder, costs stay high until production reaches a certain threshold. For over a decade, graphene batteries stayed in the prototype phase. Companies would announce breakthroughs, show impressive numbers, then go quiet when it came time to actually ship products. But recently, that's changed, the major players making 2026 possible. Samsung has been working on graphene batteries for years. Their advanced institute of technology demonstrated what they call a graphene ball battery, which uses graphene-coated particles to improve both the anode and cathode. The results were significant, 45% higher capacity and charging speeds five times faster than standard lithium-ion cells. Samsung hasn't announced a specific product yet, but reports suggest integration into consumer electronics could begin after 2025. In China, several manufacturers are further along. GAC Motors, a major automotive company, announced a graphene-based superfast battery with plans for mass production. They've claimed charging times as low as 8 minutes for electric vehicles, and pilot testing has reportedly already happened. CATL, the world's largest battery maker, is also working on graphene-enhanced cells, though they've been quieter about timelines. In the United States, Nanotech Energy is building what they call graphene battery gigafactories. They're not just researching anymore, they're manufacturing cells and shipping them to industry partners. Their focus is on non-flammable batteries with faster charging and longer lifespans, targeting both consumer electronics and electric vehicles. Europe has Skeleton Technologies, which specializes in graphene-based ultracapacitors. These aren't quite the same as batteries, but they charge in seconds and last for over a million cycles. Skeleton is developing what they call a super battery, a hybrid design aimed at industrial applications where extremely fast charging and discharging are critical, like grid storage and heavy machinery. What ties all these companies together is timing. They're not talking about 5 or 10 years from now, they're targeting 2025 and 2026 for commercial launches, with production lines either already running or under construction. That's a significant shift from the vague someday promises of the past. What changed recently? The breakthroughs behind the timeline. Several advances in the last few years made commercialization realistic. The first is scalable production. New methods like liquid exfoliation and plasma-based synthesis have drastically reduced the cost of making graphene. These techniques can produce large quantities of high-quality material without the expense of older methods. Production costs have dropped to the point where graphene can compete with existing battery materials, at least in premium products. The second breakthrough is stability. Researchers figured out how to coat graphene or modify its surface to prevent unwanted reactions with electrolytes. This solved one of the biggest degradation problems that plagued early prototypes. Batteries with these treated graphene components can now last thousands of cycles without significant capacity loss. Third is the development of hybrid architectures. Instead of replacing everything with graphene, manufacturers are combining it with other advanced materials like silicon anodes or solid-state electrolytes. These hybrids take advantage of graphene's strengths while compensating for its weaknesses, resulting in batteries that are more practical and easier to manufacture. Heat management also improved. Graphene dissipates heat extremely well, which reduces one of the main risks in lithium-ion batteries, thermal runaway where a battery overheats and catches fire. Graphene-enhanced cells stay cooler during fast charging, which not only makes them safer, but also allows them to charge faster without damage. Finally, charging speed itself saw major gains. Prototypes have demonstrated charge times under 10 minutes for electric vehicles and under 5 minutes for smartphones. This wasn't just about the graphene, it also required advances in charging infrastructure and battery management systems. But graphene made it possible to handle the high currents needed without overheating or degrading the cells. What graphene batteries will actually do for everyday devices? 
For your phone, the difference will be charging speed. Instead of plugging in for an hour, you could fully charge in 5 to 10 minutes. That changes how you think about battery life. You wouldn't need to worry as much about running out during the day because topping up would be nearly instant. Battery lifespan would also improve. Current lithium-ion cells degrade after a few hundred charge cycles, losing capacity over time. Graphene-enhanced batteries can handle several thousand cycles with minimal degradation, meaning your phone's battery would last much longer before needing replacement. Heat is another factor. Phones get warm during heavy use or fast charging, which shortens battery life and can throttle performance. Graphene dissipates heat better, keeping the device cooler and allowing it to maintain peak performance longer. Laptops would benefit similarly. Longer runtime, faster charging, and better thermal management mean thinner, lighter designs without sacrificing battery life. Power banks could become smaller and lighter while holding the same or more energy, and they'd last for years without no noticeable capacity loss. The improvements aren't revolutionary in the sense that they completely change what devices do, but they remove a lot of the friction. Charging becomes less of a chore. Batteries last longer. Devices run cooler. It's the kind of upgrade that's easy to underestimate until you experience it. How this changes electric vehicles. For electric cars, the impact is bigger. Charging time is one of the main barriers to EV adoption. Even with fast chargers, you're looking at 30 minutes or more to get a meaningful charge. Graphene batteries could cut that to under 10 minutes, making charging almost as quick as filling a gas tank. Range would also improve. Higher energy density means more miles per charge without increasing battery size or weight. That's critical because batteries are heavy, and reducing weight improves efficiency and performance. Cold weather performance is another advantage. Lithium-ion batteries lose capacity in low temperatures, which is why EVs see reduced range in winter. Graphene conducts well even when cold, so graphene-enhanced batteries batteries would maintain performance better in freezing conditions. Safety is a major concern with EV batteries. Crashes or manufacturing defects can lead to fires that are difficult to extinguish. Graphene's superior heat dissipation reduces the risk of thermal runaway, making the batteries inherently safer. Weight reduction also matters. Graphene batteries could deliver the same energy in a smaller, lighter package, which improves handling, acceleration, and efficiency. For high-performance EVs, that's a significant advantage. The shift won't happen overnight, but if automakers start integrating these batteries in 2026, the next generation of electric vehicles will be noticeably better than what's available now. Beyond phones and cars, grid storage, drones, and industrial use. Energy grids need storage to balance supply and demand, especially with renewable sources like solar and wind that produce power inconsistently. Graphene batteries, particularly hybrid supercapacitor designs, can absorb and release energy very quickly, making them ideal for load balancing. Their long cycle life means they can handle daily charging and discharging for decades without significant maintenance. Drones are another application. Delivery and logistics drones need batteries that are light, charge quickly, and last a long time. Graphene's high energy to weight ratio and fast charging fit those needs perfectly. A drone that can recharge in minutes between deliveries is far more useful than one that needs an hour. Aviation is exploring graphene batteries for electric aircraft. Weight is critical in flight, and every kilogram of battery weight reduces payload or range. Graphene's combination of high energy density and low weight could make electric planes more practical, though we're still years away from commercial electric aviation. Industrial equipment, especially heavy machinery and forklifts, could benefit from graphene supercapacitor hybrids that charge almost instantly and last for hundreds of thousands of cycles. That reduces downtime and maintenance costs. Medical devices, backup power systems, and even military applications are all looking at graphene batteries. Anywhere fast charging, long life, or extreme reliability matter, graphene has a role. The roadmap from 2026 onward. The first products in 2026 won't be cheap. Early adopters will pay a premium, likely in high-end smartphones, luxury EVs, and specialized industrial equipment. But as production scales up, prices will drop. That's how it always works. With new battery technology, adoption will accelerate if the performance claims hold up. If people experience 10-minute phone charging and it actually works reliably, demand will push manufacturers to expand production. The same goes for EVs. Once charging times drop below 10 minutes, 
minutes, range anxiety becomes much less of an issue and more people will switch. Infrastructure will need to catch up. Charging stations will need to handle the higher currents required for ultra-fast charging. Homes might need upgraded electrical systems, but these are solvable problems and investment is already happening. By the late 2020s, graphene-enhanced batteries could become standard in mid-range and high-end devices. By the early 2030s, they might be in almost everything. The transition won't be instant, but once it starts, it tends to move quickly. Battery technology doesn't improve often, but when it does, it reshapes entire industries. And that's what makes 2026 different. This isn't another lab experiment or vague promise. Production lines are running, products are coming. After more than a decade, graphene batteries are finally real.